Thank you so much for joining me for part two of exploring how structure determines function of substances. In this video segment, I'm focusing on molecular covalent, those discrete molecules that have intermolecular forces between neighboring molecules. So that will be our focal point here. So when we're talking about those, what we find is that as the strength of an intermolecular force increases, it takes to break energy, or attractive, it takes energy to break a force of attraction. So as I increase my intermolecular force, I increase the energy it takes to break that force of attraction. And so fewer molecules escape into the gas phase. So if you look at this picture down here, um, what causes pressure is when we have a closed system, we always have vapor above the liquid. That vapor can exert a pressure. And you can kind of think of this as a push of war. Okay, here the, the substance is pushing, and here it's either a vacuum or it's the atmosphere. And this difference, the amount that my substance is kind of winning, is called the pressure of that vapor or the vapor pressure. So if I have fewer molecules, I'm going to have less pressure. So the other side would be true. If I decrease my intermolecular forces, I decrease the energy it takes to break those intermolecular forces between neighboring molecules, I'll increase my moles of gas. If you increase moles, you increase your vapor pressure. So the take home here is that these are inversely proportional. So as you increase your intermolecular force, you're going to decrease your vapor pressure. So think of it this way in terms of temperature, because vapor pressure, this compares IMFs, but vapor pressure also changes with temperature. As you increase your temperature, temperature is a measure of average kinetic energy, so you increase your um, kinetic energy of the molecules. If you have higher kinetic energy, you have more energy available to help release in the collisions. You can break those intermolecular forces. You have an increased number of moles, and you will have an increased vapor pressure. Let's take a look at some charts of this. This shows some examples of some molecules, um, diethyl ether, uh, ethanol. So if I look at these, these are you know similar, not exact sizes, but some similar sizes here. And the diethyl ether has weaker intermolecular forces than the ethanol, often called ETOH, which is weaker than the water which in turn is weaker than ethylene glycol. We don't have to worry about the structure so much. I want us to look at the intermolecular forces. So first thing I want you to note is for any given substance, as I increase the temperature, I increase my vapor pressure. Okay, um, when I teach gases, students have to deal with the vapor pressure of water, and you have to look to a table of temperatures for that um, because it increases. So as you notice, the vapor pressure on the y-axis is increasing as I increase temperature on the x-axis, and that's true for each of these substances. Okay, if I look at this line here. This is at 760 torr or one atmosphere. This would be the normal boiling point. So each of these lines represent a boiling point. Okay, but along here you would have the vapor pressure at the normal boiling point, which is defined, the normal boiling point 
is defined as when it boils at, whoops, sorry, at one atmosphere. That's called the normal boiling point. Okay, so a substance boils when the vapor pressure is equal to the pressure of the atmosphere or our barometer pressure. When the vapor pressure is equal to the barometric, pr barometric pressure, sorry, we have boiling. It will boil, okay? So when vapor pressure is equivalent, that's why we have a lot of different boiling points. It depends on the barometric pressure. Okay, so hopefully that helps you understand this graph a little better. Now let's take a look at a comparison amongst these substances. So I need to find a point on here where we have all of them. So I want to compare this temperature here, okay, at that temperature, we can compare the vapor pressures for each of these substances. And you notice, I hope right away, that the substance with the weakest IMF has the highest vapor pressure at a given temperature. The substance with the strongest IMF has the lowest vapor pressure at a given temperature. And that's about comparing intermolecular forces amongst these substances. Now, I want to look at this at a little higher level here. Let's compare substances that all have London dispersion. All of these are hydrocarbons. The only intermolecular force for a hydrocarbon is London dispersion. So again, we have temperature versus vapor pressure, right? Now, as I go from each of these, you notice that pentane has five carbons, hexane has six, heptane has seven, octane has eight. So as you go from each line, what you're doing is increasing the size of the molecule. Well, if you increase size, I want you to think of the phrase September, you increase the electron density. If you increase the electron density, you increase the polarizability, the ability to shift that electron density to form a temporary dipole. So you're going to increase that temporary dipole. You might want to write out temporary dipole there. So let's take a look at that here. Let me get a good color for us. Again, I want to find a temperature where all the substances, the line crosses over. So let's look again at 40 degrees here. And so what we notice is that the smallest molecule has the weakest London dispersion force. And it has the highest vapor pressure. So you notice here it's got the highest vapor pressure. The substance that is largest, and I'm telling you, you can think molar mass, so I was trying to do a thought bubble there. You can think molar mass. Let me make that a little bit better there. Oh, Dina. Oh, Dina. Stop, stop. Give me my eraser. <laughs> okay. You can, let me clear my screen here. You can think. There we go. You can think in terms of molar mass, but it is not an issue of molar mass. Molar mass is about protons plus neutrons. London dispersion 
is all about electrons. So don't say molar mass. Think it, just don't say it. You want to focus on size and electron density and polarizability and temporary dipole, hence increased London dispersion. Okay, so we looked at, we were looking at 40 degrees before my screen got a little messy. The increased size gave me an increased electron density, an increased polarizability, an increased temporary dipole, an increased London dispersion, but a lower or decreased vapor pressure. Okay, I think that's a really, really um, important concept that um, I wanted to get across on that. All right, so that is about your London dispersion. Let me get to very quickly a summary chart on this that I think will help you. A quick summary chart for these. Now in this summary chart I am comparing here substances of one size. All right. So if they're all the same size all right, um, and we look at like ionic, metallic, network covalent. Honestly, I would not try to predict strength between those absent data. There's overlap. I want data to prove it. Um, assuming same size, you have your actual bonding forces are greater than your intermolecular forces. And if the strength is higher, the melting points are higher, the boiling points are higher. The energy it takes to vaporize, the energy it takes to melt, delta H of vaporization and fusion are higher. The surface tension, the resistance that it has um, to escaping to the vapor phase, that's kind of simplistic, but the volatility, volatile means goes to the gas phase readily. And vapor pressure, do you notice that they are inversely proportional? And um, whereas all of these were directly proportional. Now, if they're not the same size, we've got to remember London in September. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I appreciate your time. I know it's very valuable.